guys, it's Kino. Welcome to another video. So in today's pick a card, we are going to be taking a look at an offer or opportunity that is on its way to you. We are going to see whom or where this offer is coming from, of course, what the nature of this offer is, and we're also going to see what the outcome would be if you choose to accept this offer or refuse this offer. So there are four readings for you guys to choose from today, and for each each reading we have a different oracle deck that we're going to be using. This is what they look like from the back as you can see, but in just a moment I'm going to be showing you a card from each deck so that you can also have an idea of what the front artwork looks like. Because these are oracle decks, of course the cards are completely different from deck to deck, so I'm just going to show you guys a random card from each one, like literally whatever is at the top of this deck, that's the one I'm going to show you. So when you're choosing your group, you might be drawn to the back artwork or the front artwork or the actual meaning of the card that is shown to you. If you feel drawn to more than one group that is totally fine so please feel free to watch however many readings you would like because there may be multiple offers and opportunities that are coming to you. So without further ado let's show you your options. So option number one your deck is the astrology oracle and your random card is trine with the message harmony. Option number two, your deck is the You Are Here Oracle, and your random card is Lake Midnight. You're not stuck here. Blockages, stagnant energy, self-pity. Option number three, your deck is the Flower Medicine Oracle, and your random card is Eucalyptus with Cleanse and Purify. And option number four, your deck is the Aora Gemstone Oracle, and your random card is Lapis. So just in case you need a bit more time to pick, these are all of your options laid out side by side so that you can compare and see which one is calling to you the most. Take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and get started with number one. Hi number ones, so if you guys chose the Astrology Oracle deck, this is going to be your reading about offers and opportunities coming your way. I just wanted to say before we get into it that I will likely be giving multiple different interpretations for the offers that are coming to you, and please feel free to claim all of them or as many as you want. So not like you're getting this or that, but you could be getting this and that. You know what I mean? Yes. So um, we're going to start off by rolling the Astro Dice to get our first ideas of what might be coming your way. Okay, so this would be, okay, this is nine. And then we have the sign of Aquarius and we also have Uranus. So these two energies are going together because Aquarius is ruled by the planet of Uranus, but this Uranus energy is making me think that this offer is going to be completely unexpected to you guys. I do think it's going to be something that makes you very happy, but it's not necessarily something that you're already anticipating is coming your way because the energy of Uranus is pretty erratic, <laughs> it's pretty unpredictable, and it does have a kind of shocking energy to it. So I do think that this offer is going to be a pleasant surprise. And then the sign of Aquarius that we have here, um, this could actually be indicating that the offer is coming from a friend because the sign of Aquarius makes me think of community and friendships and your connections, this kind of thing. And then with the number nine here, this is associated with the ninth house, and this is making me think about travel. So maybe one of the offers that is coming to you guys is that your friend is going to unexpectedly invite you to go on a trip with them. That's, I wasn't expecting it to be that specific right from the get-go, but this is one offer that I can definitely see coming to you guys may also be, because um, this is about connections and networking as well, this Aquarian energy, it could be that you are starting to make connections with people online or you're making connections with people in other countries. Maybe there's like a new long distance or online friend or some connection that is blossoming here. But, oh yes, I also wanted to take a card from this tarot deck to see if we can get a bit more information about 
this offer. Is there anything else we should know about the nature of this offer or who is making this offer? We have, okay, so the Queen of Wands is coming through. The person who is coming to bring you this offer might be a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or in general, the energy of the Queen of Wands is someone whom you really, really admire. This would be someone you really look up to for their confidence or their charisma, or you look up to them for their creative talents. I am sort of getting like boss energy or <laughs> like I'm thinking bad bitch energy from this person. Um, regardless of their gender, it's someone you really look up to and think, damn, they're so cool. And in many ways, you might think that their life is very aspirational. So it's kind of looking like they're going to invite you somewhere, like invite you to visit them or invite you to some event where you can do a lot of networking and you're sort of getting a glimpse into their world. And oh my goodness, I just remembered <laughs> when it comes to the Queen and King of Wands, sometimes this interpretation comes to me where it's like your soul feels really, really drawn to this person because in many ways they're showing you what your soul longs to become or they're they're mirroring back to you your own potential and your own talents so it's like there's a part of you that wants to be like them because that's who your very soul is they represent your potential they represent how you can shine in this world and their energy is very very similar to yours um this will be someone who's incredibly funny has you know sunny and friendly disposition and you just can't help but feel inspired and uplifted when you are around them Ooh, i love the energy of this group so far so let's get into the oracle deck that you guys chose and see if there's anything else you guys need to know This could be someone who is a little bit older than you as well and who you'll feel is ahead in life. Um, I, I just felt like putting air quotes because that's very, very subjective, but you might feel like, yeah, like they're where you want to be in life. Okay, so, ooh, you guys have work. So this is an offer that's going to lead to some work networking for you guys, or maybe this person is asking you to collaborate or something like that. Um, they're helping you to level up. They're helping you to escalate in your dreams and goals and aspirations. So, oh, and we also have some Virgo energy here in case that is significant for you. So we have habits, health, service, colleagues, employees, skills, workplace, daily routines, nutrition, diet, fitness, hygiene, checkups, and responsibilities. Okay, and then we have Juno with commitment. Interesting. So we have marriage, long-term relationships, fulfillment, compatibility, give and take, loyalty, partnerships, intimacy needs, soulmates, unions and june so maybe this offer is coming to you guys in the month of june um very very interesting that we have the soulmates energy here um this queen of wands that we see here could be one of your creative soulmates one of your professional soulmates someone you were meant to meet in this lifetime and work with them and create something together i do see that this person is offering you something that is long term because it's going to require commitment to this person it's not a, a one-off thing where they offer you something and you're like oh hey thanks and then you go your separate ways you're gonna to have to work with this person for quite some time and you're gonna to have to commit to the project or commit to the job i think that the message of marriage and long-term relationships could be interpreted a little bit more um metaphorically here however if this is resonating with you, there could be a sort of romantic relationship <laughs> that is in the works here as well. We spoke a lot about like networking and friendships and connections. So um, if you are resonating with having a romantic connection 
directly with this person, you can definitely claim that. However, it might be someone whom you meet through interacting with this person. Like, because there was that feeling of being invited into this person's world, into this person's circle. And I think you're going to be surrounded by a lot of fresh faces with this, like, ninth house Aquarius Uranus energy. It feels very expansive. It feels very new and exhilarating. I think you guys, and maybe coming up around the month of June, you're going to start to see a shift in the people you're hanging out with and the people you're surrounded with. And this new group that's surrounding you makes you a lot more motivated and makes you feel a lot more confident. Like, I can really make my dreams a reality. I can really do something. I can really be something. It's a very empowering energy. And I think that there's going to be a few people you resonate with really, really strongly. So if you do resonate with this marriage, long-term relationships in a romantic sense, this could be a member of the new circle that you're finding yourself in, someone that you meet through networking, someone that you meet through this friend, um, with whom you have a romantic spark. So the pursuit of your dreams, the pursuit of a new project that could lead to meeting a future romantic partner. Wow. Okay. So now we have to see what is going to happen if you guys choose to take this offer and what is going to happen if you guys refuse this offer, because of course it is totally up to you. And I mean, I'm feeling really, really positive about it <laughs> from the energy that we have here so far. But let's see what the cards have to say. And maybe we kind of have, hmm, I'm trying to think, this is pile one, so <laughs> I'm figuring out what format I want to use. Because we did see multiple offers coming through. We see an offer for a long-term work partnership. We saw an invitation to travel somewhere and do some networking. And then we also saw a potential romantic connection. I think I'll have to look at all of them individually. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what will happen if you accept this opportunity of traveling and networking? We have the Two of Swords. And if you guys don't accept the offer, we have the Page of Pentacles. Interesting. So the Two of Swords indicates indecision. And I'm wondering if you guys will kind of feel iffy about accepting this offer. Maybe it has to do with the fact that it's out of the blue. Maybe it has to do with the fact that it's kind of overwhelming. Maybe there are certain restrictions in place and like you're wondering if you should if you should take the risk. It's interesting that we have the Page of Pentacles here because I'm feeling that even if you say no to this offer, um, the opportunity will not go away. Maybe maybe this offer will be postponed and there will be another opportunity because I'm not seeing you guys at any loss if you say no. So if you feel kind of iffy, if you feel kind of on the fence about the sudden out of the blue offer that comes to you, I do think that it's okay to refuse at this time because it will likely come back up at a later date. And actually, the Page of Pentacles... I think is representing you. And I think the coin is representing your value, something that you've been working on, something that you can bring to the table. Maybe you guys are feeling like you just need a little bit more time to prepare your ideas or prepare what you can offer to these new connections. Um, like for example, and here I go with the musician example again. Let's say you're an aspiring musician and then someone out of the blue invites you to like a songwriting session with some really cool people or like a recording session or something, but it's in another city and you're like, ah, I don't know because there's some restrictions going on and I don't know if I feel ready. It's all so sudden. Like I just need time to think. If you say, 
not this time, I think I'm going to pass this time, you will get invited again. This opportunity will come to you again. And when it does come to you again, I think you're going to feel a lot more confident. Maybe you'll have like, you know, you've been working on some songs with this extra time. And this is a place where you feel a lot more secure about the value that you would add to the group. You know, you're not going to feel like, oh, I'm just tagging along and watching you guys. You're going to feel more like, yes, I have something to bring to this session and I'm really proud of it. Because that's what I see when I look at this Page of Pentacles. Um, the Page of Pentacles is a very interesting card to me because I feel like his overall vibe and how he feels about his pentacle <laughs> changes quite a bit from deck to deck. This is definitely one where I feel the page is really proud of his pentacle and he really sees... Um, potential and value in it because he's standing up and he's he's holding it up high it looks like he's ready to offer it so yeah if you guys need more time to feel ready need more time to work on your stuff before you say yes to this offer i do think that that is is totally okay and so if you feel that kind of nagging i'm not sure indecision i think that there is no need to force yourself and it's interesting too, because with the Two of Swords, this is really a decision that you have to make with your gut. It's not one that you can make with logical analysis. Like you have to go with, with what your heart is telling you. You have to go with what your intuition is telling you. Okay, so you guys also had an offer for a long-term work partnership that is coming up a long-term commitment, maybe it's like a, a long-term contract or something. With this, um, health, daily routines, responsibilities, um, maybe some of you guys, this might be a very specific message for some of you guys, but maybe you've kind of been out of the daily grind for a while. Um, like you haven't been, I don't know why I'm calling it a grind, but you know, most people have that regular schedule of like, wake up in the morning, go to work, fulfill responsibilities, go home. Maybe you guys have been out of that daily hustle for some time. Like your flex, your schedule has been more loose or more flexible. And this offer that is coming to you would make it so that you have to be that like responsible, regular routine member of society again, the kind of like a nine to five or you would have a regular schedule again. So that might be something that is a little bit, um, the word intimidating is coming to my mind or just kind of a, a point of concern. Like, can I step into that role again after being out of it? Or maybe this offer would, you know, put a pretty impactful change on your daily routine. Maybe actually diet and fitness is like a concern for some of you. If I become really, really busy, will I be able to keep up my, my workout schedule? Will, will I be able to keep up my healthy diet? So let's look at this long-term work offer that is coming to you. What will happen if you accept this offer? Interesting that the cards, the cards are taking their sweet time to come out. So you might need a lot of time to think about this one. Okay, we have the Knight of Cups. I'm very happy to see this. And then what would happen if you refuse this offer? Page of Cups. Hmm. So again, I am seeing this as you. I think that you guys will be successful and happy whether you accept this offer or not. The way this is coming to me is like, this is the same person. The only difference is a horse, <laughs> is a horse and a bit of extra armor. Um, I also want to, I also want to point out that the Page of Cups has the, the fish in his cup and the Knight of Cups doesn't. So if you accept this offer, it will definitely bring a lot more stability and a lot more predictability to your lifestyle because the fish in this cup kind of represents, um, 
like surprises and unpredictability. Um, so I'm thinking of this as someone who could kind of have a routine or no, could have a schedule where every day is different. They can kind of do whatever they feel like that day. They can kind of act on their whims. Whereas in the Knight of Cups with no fish, it's like, okay, I'm waking up and I'm doing the same schedule every day. I'm doing the same things every day. So this would lead to you guys having a lifestyle that I think is more organized, but could also feel a little bit more rigid. I do have to say, I still think this job or this work commitment would have your schedule on the more flexible side compared to others because we have the suit of cups here and this is more of like a go with the flow, leisurely energy. It would still be on the flexible side, but maybe it's just a little bit more regimented than what you've been used to when you compare it to your current lifestyle. Um, I also think with this armor, it's like you will be more protected. So maybe there are some benefits that come with taking this commitment. Maybe you'll have a team, a team of people who are helping you, or maybe you'll have some kind of insurance or some kind of financial benefits that protect you if there's ever some expense or if there's ever some unexpected incident, the armor's making me feel like you will be more safe. And then with the horse, horses mean that you can go farther, faster. So you definitely will have a lot more support if you accept this offer. I think that you will make money, you'll make more money in less time. It's almost like the horse is more efficient. You'll be doing work more efficiently. You'll be making money more efficiently. You'll be climbing up the ladder more efficiently because you're in a team. You're in a system. Whereas I think if you're on your own, it's this feeling of you're still going to get to where you want to go, but through a bit more trial and error and with a bit less support. So again, it's like same person. This person just has a horse <laughs> and they have some extra armor. And let's take a look at this romantic offer that was kind of sneaking around in this reading too. I am kind of getting the feeling that it's not this Queen of Wands person <laughs> who is, well, it could be, but I think for most of you, it's a new person, a new person coming in. We will make oh my goodness that's that's a lot do we take all of them i'm gonna take just the hanged man because that's the one that's um that's the one that was face up the person making you a romantic offer could be a pisces and what would happen if you decline this offer. We have the Queen of Swords. Hmm. I think many of you will feel inclined to decline this offer or maybe you're being encouraged to. We do have the Hanged Man here if you guys take this offer. And what this tells me is that this would be a relationship that moves very, very slowly. Now, for many of you guys, it might be because of circumstances that are out of your control. So for example, this might be a long distance relationship and then you can't be together in the way that you want to and it just constantly feels like you are waiting for each other. Or it could have to do with this work that you are taking on and maybe this person is busy so you can't see each other that often. Um, it could also be some form of emotional unavailability on their end if I'm being honest, but the hanged man is this feeling of being stuck, of being made to wait. You want things to move forward, but the situation is really not favoring that. So this is kind of giving you a heads up that if you were to accept this offer, it might lead to some feelings of frustration and you would really have to shift your mindset, almost like you would have to distract yourself with other things while you're waiting for this connection to come through. 
Now, that might work for some of you if you're like, okay, I'll just focus on my own thing, I'll focus on building up my pentacle, I'll focus on this work opportunity that's coming to me, and this relationship will come around when it comes around. Um, if you're able to have that peace, and you're able to have that compassion for the situation and accept the situation, then I do think that eventually this connection will come around and it will be everything that you want it to be. Um, but we have the Queen of Swords, which is, is a pretty straightforward message when it comes to declining an offer, because I think of the Queen of Swords as someone who is like cutting people out of their life. She's a very no-nonsense, doesn't take a lot of crap, so I think there's just a, a warning that it might lead you to feel emotionally frustrated or like time is being wasted and it's like you might be over it. <laughs> you might be over it pretty quickly. Like I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing any progress here and many of you guys might not really feel like it's worth the wait, but that is entirely up to you. Just be aware that it would be pretty, pretty slow moving. Okay, so we are going to finish off the reading with some advice. Some overall advice for you guys. Okay, so this card says you're moving things in a good direction. So things are on the up and up for you, if that's the right expression. <laughs> you're definitely about to level up and really upgrade in your life. I really like this because it mirrors with the message that we saw at the very beginning. You are ascending, you're starting to align with people whom you aspire to, people who are reminding your soul of your soul's talents and your soul's potential. This next chapter of your life is really, really going to be a fulfilling one. Um, June, the month of June, like we saw here, might be significant, as well as Virgo season, because we do have the sixth house here. So this is, of course, a timeless reading. So whatever is coming up for you guys, like coming up next at the time that you're watching this video, June or Virgo season, which is roughly September, those times might be significant for you where you're really, really going to start to feel um, that your future is promising. You're really going to start to feel like you're embodying your potential and that things are looking up for you. I'm also... I haven't used this deck in ages. I don't even have it with me, but I'm seeing the card from the Angel Answers Oracle deck and it says the situation will improve and it's this person like coming up from underwater. It's like you guys are getting clarity. You're moving to the light at the end of the tunnel. Dolphins might also be a significant spirit animal for you guys because I think there's dolphins on that card. <laughs> One more card. Ooh! So this card says, the flower that is you is always in full bloom. Ooh! I have chills when I read that message for you guys. You are blossoming. You are blossoming in this next chapter. You are really embodying this Queen of Wands energy. I feel like many of you guys, first of all, you're so multifaceted and so multi-talented, but I feel like there's certain facets of you that haven't gotten a chance to be in the spotlight. There's either some part of you that you've been hiding away from a lack of confidence, um, especially a creative side or like a confident sensual side, <laughs> um, or you don't even realize that this side of you is there. But I think that this next chapter of your life is really calling that charming, creative, bold, like we have this peacock, that's the, that might be an important spirit animal as well, but that's like the epitome of creativity and confidence and strutting your stuff. There is that energy within you that really, really wants to be awakened. Um, if you guys like crystals and if you do collect crystals, I would really recommend to have peacock ore. 
Um, it's very beautiful. It's rainbow colored and sparkly. And this is a great stone to promote creativity, self-expression, and confidence. And, and those are going to be things that really, really help you in this next leg of your journey. You're always in full bloom. So just to uh, recap everything, because there was a few different offers that we looked at here. Um, if you are being invited to an event, being invited to network and show off your skills, being invited to travel somewhere. Um, you can say yes, it's going to be very fruitful, but if you're kind of feeling off about it, don't worry about saying no, because that opportunity is definitely going to resurface for you. This is one that I think is not going to go away. Um, and you, you may want to, or you may feel inclined to wait until you have, you know, honed your skills a little bit more or until you have a bit more material to present or maybe you need to save money like this could be very very literal maybe you just feel like you need to save some money before you go for that opportunity for some of you this could also be an audition like you want to travel somewhere to go to an audition but you're like no nah, i feel like i'm not good enough yet or i feel like i need to save some money first whatever your concerns are it's okay because I don't feel like this is time sensitive and and you really do want to show up feeling your best and show up feeling really confident and feeling like you're going to kill it and so if what you need for that is just more time to prepare and save up and you know get yourself mentally ready then I think that that's valid because this is not a race and you deserve to feel confident and sure of yourself this work commitment I think it will depend on what you want. You'll definitely be more supported and go a lot farther if you accept this offer. But if you don't accept it, then you'll get to maintain more flexibility in your life and more spontaneity in your life. So this will be up to you. With all of this cups energy, this could be hinting like to go with your heart when it comes to this as well. Go with your heart and your feelings. And then the romantic offer, Again, I mean, these are all up to you, right? That goes without saying, but you will really, really need to be willing to wait and focus on other areas of your life while this connection comes to fruition. Because with the hangman here, it, it does look like you could be waiting for quite some time. If you already know who this is and you're already waiting for them, it could be indicating that they would not come around anytime soon or that the external circumstances that are keeping you apart wouldn't be changing anytime soon. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, but yes, these are all of the messages I have for you guys today. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon. So if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I think I'm going to start plugging my music as well. <laughs> I have a music channel. The song that you heard at the very beginning of this video is an original song, so that's linked as well. Then if you want to check out my music channel and the other songs on there, um, please feel free to do that. That would really, really mean a lot to me because the songs are my babies. So yes. <laughs> um, oh god, Anytime I add or change the outro, I get completely lost. You guys might know that. But anyway, I'm sending you lots of love. I think that was, that's the only thing that's left to do is send you guys my love. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number twos. So if you guys chose the You Are Here Oracle, this is going to be a reading about the offers and opportunities that are coming your way. So just before we get into it, I did want to say that it's likely that I'm going to be seeing multiple interpretations for offers that are coming your way and please feel free to claim all of them or as many as you would like to claim. So it's not that you're getting either offer A or B, but you can get both A and B. There's no limit to the good things that you guys can receive. So we're going to start off this reading with the Astro Dice to get our first idea of what might be coming to you. 
Okay, so we have the number six here, so that would be related to the sixth house in astrology. We also have the sign of Scorpio, and we have the sun. Okay, so with the number six here, likely the offer that is coming to you is something that would change your day-to-day -day life. It would change your schedule or your routine in some way. So this tells me that the offer coming to you is not just a one-time thing that you accept and that's the end of it, but it's an offer for something that is going to be long-term, like a long-term shift in your life. I do think it's going to be something that is very healthy for you, very beneficial for you, with the sun here and this kind of healthy vibe that I'm getting from the sixth house, I think it's something that is really going to let you shine. If you accept this offer, you're going to feel like you're really living in a way that is authentic to you. So if I can just give an example that's coming to me very quickly about what this might be, it's like getting an offer for a job that the schedule is a lot more in alignment with how you naturally like to work and how you naturally feel productive. Um, maybe the job is a lot more in alignment to what you naturally like and what you're naturally good at because with the sun here, it feels like your essence is shining through. It feels like you really get to show up and express yourself in the way that you want to and like you really get to be who you want to be and you really get to be proud of what you are doing. So I really, really like this energy here. With the Scorpio energy that we have here, it could be actually that the person who is bringing you this offer is a Scorpio. Um, so if you know any Scorpios that you were, you know, wondering if there's potential there, I think that it's very, very favorable. This is a timeless reading, of course, but if at the time that you're watching this video, Scorpio season is coming up, and then this could be indicative of when you are going to receive the offer. Um, but let's get into the cards now and see if we can sort of piece this together a little bit more. So I'm going to take a clarifying tarot card to get a bit more details. What should group two know about this offer that is coming to them? Okay, so we actually have two. I'm going to take both of them. Ooh, we have the Queen of Swords. And we have the Page of Pentacles. Interesting. So the message that I'm getting for you guys, and this is actually reminding me of, you know, the round tea leaf fortune cards. I use them quite a bit on my channel and many other readers have them as well, but there's a flag card. So it has a picture of a flag on it and it says, do not be tempted to lower your standards. And this is totally giving me that vibe because the queen of swords is the queen and the page of pentacles is coming over to hand his coin and she gets to decide if it's good enough for her. She gets to decide if she's going to take it. And it's really important to remember, like, this is a queen versus a page. And I, I don't really like to put people on levels, but I think that this is insinuating that you guys might get some offers that are not good enough for you. And your higher self wants you to have the courage to turn it down. The Queen of Swords really has this vibe of cutting things away that do not serve you, of being very discerning, of having healthy boundaries, and also being like very no nonsense and no bullshit, <laughs> essentially. So while I do think there is an amazing offer coming to you guys, I also think that before you receive this offer, you will likely receive some subpar offers. It's very interesting to me that we have the Page of Pentacles here because it came up in group one's reading as well in a different part of the reading but it did come up and i was sort of going on about how i think it's so interesting how the vibe of the page of pentacles specifically tends to change from deck to deck and in the other deck the page was holding up his coin really confidently but in this one he's kind of holding it lower and so to me it looks a bit less confident or maybe his pentacle has a bit less value um, know your worth. That's a really, really big message for you guys. Know your worth when it comes to the offers that you're receiving. Um, when you have a lack mentality, or when anyone, when we have a lack mentality, sometimes we will accept offers just because we think that 
oh, I'm so lucky that I even got an offer or I'm not going to get anything else, so I might as well take this or there's no way I'm going to find anything better or, you know, I just want to fill this void quickly, so I'll say yes. Um, and I think that your higher self is really warning you against that in this situation. Remember that the offer that is right for you it's going to allow you to have a very healthy day to day and it's going to allow you to always be authentic and express yourself in the way that you want to. And there's a bit of a warning against committing to something that would be stifling or where you have to like suppress how you're truly feeling or suppress what you truly want to do. I do think for many of you this is um, work related because of the sixth house and because of the the pentacles energy that we have here. It could of course be like a personal relationship, a personal connection, but I am getting kind of worky vibes. I also think it's quite interesting that I think these are eagles. I think on the queen's throne, these are eagles. And then we had that Scorpio energy. Um, and eagle is one of the symbols of Scorpio. So maybe eagles are an important, oh yeah. Shit, yeah. <laughs> eagles are probably an important spirit animal for you guys because um, eagles fly high as high as heck. <laughs> I think that they're the highest flying bird or one of the highest flying birds. And this is all about knowing your worth and knowing your potential and knowing that you can soar very high. And also about valuing your freedom. Like you don't want to tie yourself down to a commitment that is not going to honor you, that is not going to um, pay you off, whether that's like materially or emotionally. It has to be worth it. It has to be fit for a queen. So just be careful not to accept the first offer that comes to you. I feel like there will be at least one offer that you want to reject before you get the offer and maybe maybe a few um i don't know if you guys are a scorpio and that's why it's coming up but i think that you're being asked to channel that kind of scorpio -y energy don't be afraid to stand up for yourself remember that you are the boss of your life remember that you are the most powerful person in your life it might feel like you're being a little bit harsh and it also might be really scary. Like, what am I doing saying no to this opportunity? Like, are you crazy? I'm not going to get another one. But you will. And you will get the right offer. Okay, so let's finally dive into the deck that you guys chose. Let's see what other insights we can get here. Ooh, that one flew out really quickly. Campfire circle. Create deep and magical connections. Relationships, bonding, and community. The letter C might be significant as well. Feels like there's a lot of C's on that card. <laughs> so it could be somebody's initial, first, or last name. It could also be um, the first letter of a country, city, or company. What else? Cancer, Capricorn. And then we have, oh, mushroom dimension. <laughs> Everything is connected. Connection, magic, and openness. Both of these cards are talking about connection. Okay, um, some of you guys, <laughs> if I read this very literally, some of you guys might get, because this is about offers that you're getting, some of you guys might be offered <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> You might be offered mushrooms by somebody or offered some kind of psychedelic experience or some kind of mind altering experience. I'm really not going to give you advice about whether you should take up that offer or not because that's a very, very personal decision. I personally do not have much experience with this kind of thing. So I'm not the person you want to ask for advice about that, but if you feel called to do it and if you feel safe with the people who are going to be there, like if it's a trusted group of friends and you feel like it might benefit you, then it could be a very enlightening experience that helps you see the oneness in everything, that helps you see the connection in everything. This could also be an experience that 
helps you to have some kind of epiphanies. Um, I could also take mushrooms out of the picture <laughs> if that's not your thing. You might get invited to a gathering with friends, especially something that is spiritual in nature, um, like a spiritual retreat or a spiritual event. Um, if that's the case, I feel a lot more comfortable to give advice <laughs> that it would be beneficial to go. And for the same reason, I think it could help you have epiphanies, it could help you have some kind of awakening, maybe it will help you to see your worth and help you to see your potential and help you to see your power. And it's interesting too, because scorpio -y energy does tend to really help us dive into the depths of our subconscious and see what is holding us back and see what skin we need to shed. Maybe there's an opportunity coming for you guys to shed this lack mentality and to shed this fear that has sort of been perpetuating, I don't want to say a subpar life, but I guess kind of a dissatisfying life. This will maybe help you to cultivate your abundance mindset, like a spiritual circle of friends, um, a retreat, a holiday, help you to gain some perspective. Some of you guys might just in general need a break, like need a break from your everyday life so that you can clear your mind and put things into a fresh perspective. So if you get any invitations coming up, like, hey, I want you to meet my friends or we're going to go camping or we're going to go have a bonfire. We're going to go to the beach together. Um, I think that you should say yes. I think that you should go out of your out of your day-to-day -day experience and just have a refreshing, yeah, a refreshing experience. All right, so let's move on to the next tarot deck now because we want to see what will happen if you accept these offers and what will happen if you decline these offers. So we did kind of see multiple things here. Do I want to read for the Page of Pentacles offer? Maybe. Okay, so we have the Hermit. You guys are getting quite a bit of extra cards. And then we have the Four of Cups and the Knight of Swords, which are coming out together. Okay, this is very interesting. This is very telling. The Hermit, first of all, Virgo energy could be significant for you guys, either Virgo season or a Virgo person. Maybe you are a Virgo. Um, there's almost this feeling of, and actually, when this card first came out, I almost mistook it for the High Priestess. Like... This is the Queen of Swords, but it looks very high priestessy to me. And I do think that you guys have a very, very strong intuition with the Scorpio energy that is present here, um, with this deeply spiritual energy that is present here. You guys are definitely tapped in. I think sometimes you just need to be reminded of that and reminded of the power that you hold. I'm feeling like a pressure in my forehead right now. This could be speaking to your third eye that is very, very strong. Even this dark blue gem on the queen's crown, it's the same color that is associated with the third eye and it's also in the same um, position. So I do think that your third eye is wide open. The blue stone around her neck as well. Some of you guys need to really activate your throat chakra and start speaking up for yourself and start establishing your boundaries. Um, there's this feeling of when the right offer comes to you, you will know. You will know because of your intuition. And also, this Knight of Swords, it's this moment of clarity. It's this moment of decisiveness. And you see how fast this Knight is going. He's like, I gotta move. I gotta go for it. I gotta, I gotta speak up. I want this. Let's go. And if I read these all together... I feel like you guys, maybe you guys are feeling kind of stuck or kind of stagnant in your life and you you want opportunities to find you, you want offers to find you, like we all do, but there's this feeling of you've been maybe receiving opportunities or you've been finding them yourself, like going out and looking for them, but maybe nothing has really 
nothing has really clicked. When I look at the Four of Cups, this person is sitting here and looking at all of the offers that are in front of him and just not really feeling any kind of way about them. Nothing has really like stirred you, maybe that's the right way to put it, but there's a message here that first of all, I think you guys might be feeling pressured to just go for opportunities or to just take offers because you want to feel unstuck. And I just want to say that I don't think that is a good enough reason. I think a lot of people could relate to this. This is something I can relate to, but it's like when you feel pressure to go to university because that's what everybody is doing, like maybe you feel pressure from your parents or society or you just feel like that's what I'm meant to do at this point in my life, but like you're not really passionate about any of the majors, so you just pick like the least of the evils <laughs> or you or maybe you just randomly pick one. And it's not because you're passionate about the major, but it's like I got to go to school cuz that's what people do. And I feel like you guys are really being discouraged from making decisions like that. Because what I'm seeing here is that when the right path reveals itself to you or when the right offer comes to you, it's going to be like this sudden and very deep intuitive hit of like, this is it, let's go. And you're going to be like this knight of swords who's made a very, very clear decision and is running towards it. Maybe some of you guys have felt like you are indecisive or you are ungrateful or even like you're unmotivated. And this is not the case at all. It's that deep down your soul knows that none of these paths are really up to their standards or none of these paths are really in alignment with their highest good. And trust me, when that path comes to you, you will, you will know like a snap of the fingers. You will know so fast. And I just worry that you guys could accept offers out of fear. Like out of fear that you're running out of time, that other people are moving ahead, so you need to start moving ahead, um, that, it, that another offer isn't going to come or something better isn't going to come. These are all like fear-based decisions. And... With the Hermit, I feel like you guys have been doing a lot of reflecting and a lot of contemplating about what you want to do. But I think for this group, when the right solution comes, it's going to be effortless. It's going to be a no-brainer. And I don't know if this offer has found you yet, or maybe it's it's just around the corner and you don't see it coming. Because um, with the Four of Cups, it's like everything you already have in front of you is not quite it but spirit's getting ready to offer you something else. You just have to look up and see it. Wow, this one definitely got a little bit deeper. <laughs> um, okay, so let's pull a couple cards for this um, invitation, this spiritual retreat. I do feel like it's like your friend, your friend might be inviting you somewhere to meet their friends or to do some kind of spiritual practice or maybe to do some kind of ritual together. Let's, let's look into more about what this is. And so again, there's like two different offers in this reading, but it's not one or the other. You can claim both of these offers. So we have the Two of Swords, that's funny, that came out for group one for one of their offers. Some of you guys might be feeling um, kind of on the fence about this, not sure if you want to go or not. Um, it could be like because of the unfamiliar environment or maybe some unfamiliar people, especially if you're an introvert and you're just like not sure if it's worth it. Or if it is an organized spiritual retreat, then maybe there's like the money factor that is kind of weighing on your mind. You don't know if you want to spend the money. Okay, so if you accept the offer, we have the Two of Swords. If you decline the offer, we have the World. And then I also want to, I also want to put this here. This is at the bottom of the deck, the Seven of Cups. Hmm. And it's interesting too, because the Seven of Cups recently, well, is it recently? Maybe it's actually for the past couple months. Time flies way too quickly, but <laughs> the Seven of Cups has been reminding me of the crown chakra in readings that I have been doing because cups in tarot is the suit of like intuition, 
spirituality, and then seven is related to the seventh chakra. So your higher chakras are very, very powerful. Your throat, your third eye, and your crown are very, very powerful. Kind of off topic of the reading, but some of you guys might be amazing channelers because that's speaking, you're using your throat, and then third eye and crown, you're using your spiritual abilities. You might be able to channel spirit guides. You might be able to channel those who have crossed over. And actually, you can probably also channel those who are incarnated right now. Like, you know how we do, like, channeled messages from your person or from this person. I feel like you're really good at channeling that energy from others and and speaking it yeah you know what i mean <laughs> you might be very very powerful channelers i don't know if that's something you guys have explored before or you might um you might want to but you could have a beautiful voice as well like a beautiful talking voice or a beautiful singing voice um it's interesting i feel like you guys have you feel indecisive, but it's like you perceive yourself as being indecisive, but deep down your soul is very sure. It's almost like, I don't know if pretending to be indecisive is the right way to put it, but it's kind of like you are lying to yourself. Like, I don't know, should I do this or should I do that? It's so confusing. But like, if you're honest with yourself, you really, really know what you want to do. So maybe, maybe some, somehow you feel that what you really want is not valid. Like, because I'm not able to justify what I want, then it's, it doesn't count. And I have to analyze the situation and figure out what the, what the best decision is, like based on what I should do or based on what other people want, or something like that. Um, it's interesting that we have the Two of Swords as well, because, and I was just talking about this in the previous group, but, you know, this is a struggle to make a decision, but it's this feeling of no amount of analysis is ever gonna, is ever gonna tell you what the right answer is. Because at the end of the day, you have to make this decision with your intuition. For me, or maybe that's the meaning of this card, but that's why the person is blindfolded. And that's why we have this crescent moon. For me, the, the crescent moon is like intuition. And it's almost like going around in circles. And I could even say like wasting your own time when you've always known what you wanted to do, but then you started accepting all of these other factors into your decision-making process. Like what makes the most sense to other people or in society or what other people expect of you or what you think would make you look like a responsible or acceptable person. Like all of these other factors started coming into play. And I think that many of you have actually like tricked yourself into thinking that you're indecisive or that you don't know what you want. But I think that you really do. It's just, it's like you don't want to accept it or you don't want to see it or you don't want to admit that's what you really want if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to say the same thing for group one that I said with the two of swords, and that is that you might want to say no to the first invitation you get. It's interesting. That's kind of like a repeating theme in this reading, but there was a message of like, even if you say no, this invitation will still stand. I just worry that if you guys are still in this seven of cups energy where you're you're overwhelming yourself and ah, I don't know what I want to do and you accept an invitation where there's going to be like friends around and new faces and everyone's trying to help you you know I think that people mean well but I feel like people's advice is not what you need right now and I know that's very ironic because I'm literally giving you advice but it's like the more you talk to people about your situation or the more people you tell about your situation, they're going to have their own projections and their own ideas about what you should do with your life. And again, they mean well, but it could just confuse you even more. And I think that what you need right now is to be with yourself and get your story straight with yourself so that 
when you listen to someone's advice, you're n not necessarily swayed by it, but you're, you're discerning like the Queen of Swords. And you're like, okay, I'm going to take that part of your advice and I'm going to throw that part away because that's not in alignment. So it's like getting your ducks in a row first <laughs> on your own and remembering your truth. And then I think you can start mingling with new friends or attending, like joining a spiritual community or going to a spiritual retreat or something like that. Maybe it feels like now is not the time, but I do feel the same thing that I felt for group one. And that is, even if you decline this offer for now, it will come up again. And it's funny because the world is about cycles. Maybe it's like an annual thing, um, an annual thing that you're invited to attend and you're like, no, I'll go next time. Or it's just a regularly occurring thing. Maybe it's like a monthly, a monthly spiritual circle or, or something like that, or a monthly gathering. And maybe you want to sit this one out because I feel like there's stuff that you need to figure out on your own. There's your, your true self wants to come knocking <laughs> is the way that it's coming to me. Your true self wants to come knocking. Yes. So let's move on to the final Oracle deck for your last messages and advice. Woo. Okay, so this, oh, wow. That's, this deck is being kind of freaky today, I have to say. Um, this card says there is nothing wrong with your judgment. And we've been talking about you being like the high priestess, you being like the queen of swords, you knowing your truth. You know your truth, but you've forgotten it and it's time to recover it. I feel like I don't even really need to interpret this much further. There is nothing wrong with your decisions. There is nothing wrong with your judgment. Yeah, with the hermit here, it's like, I feel like a period of, and it can be a short period, but a period of solitude and a period of soul searching could be really beneficial for you guys. Wow. And then this is literally like the Knight of Swords. <laughs> this card says, now is the time to give it a shot with all your might, or now is the time to go for it with all your might. So that's literally this Knight of Swords being like, yes, that's it. I'm going for it. I'm giving it all I got. I'm telling you guys, when the right offers come to you, when the right opportunities come to you, there will be none of this like, eh, I'm not really feeling it. There will be none of this like, ah, I'm not sure what I want to do. And it, it sounds cliche, but when you know, you know. When the right thing comes, you will know. And like identifying yourself as indecisive is not going to do you any favors because then you're going to say like, oh, I'm just indecisive. This is just the way I am. I just need to make a decision and go for it. You're not though. Your soul just recognizes like this isn't it. And then your mind is like, yeah, but you have to pick something. And your, your mind is kind of getting in the way here. If I'm being honest, your soul is not indecisive at all. And I keep saying it because I feel like it's something that you guys need to get out of your head because it can be harmful to rush yourself to make a decision for those reasons. Wow, Molly's going crazy upstairs. <laughs> yep. And she kind of sounded like a siren, which is funny because there used to be so many sirens in my readings. Um, but yes, I think, I think I've said everything that I want to say. And I want to send you guys a lot of power and a lot of courage because I feel like that's what you need. So these are all the messages I have for you guys. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick-a-cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. 
And I also have a music channel. That music that you heard at the very start of this video is an original song and that is linked everywhere as well. So if you guys want to check out my songs, that would mean a lot to me. They are my babies and yes, the link will be down below. I'm sending you guys lots of love and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye! Hi number threes, so if you guys chose the Flower Medicine Oracle, this is going to be a reading all about the offers and opportunities that are coming your way. So just before we get into it, I do want to say that I will likely be giving multiple interpretations of offers that are coming to you, and please feel free to claim all of them or however many you like. So it's not that you are either being offered A or B, but you can claim both a and B because there is no limit to the good things that are coming to you. So we are going to start off this reading with the Astro Dice to get our first idea of what might be on its way to you. Okay, so interesting. So you guys have, oops, <laughs> it was at 11, but then I accidentally knocked it, but you guys got Aquarius, the sign of Aquarius, as well as 11. So these actually match up because Aquarius is associated with the 11th house. Um, but what the number 11 is making me think of in this case is that the offer that is coming to you is probably something that you guys already really want and already something that you, oh my gosh, I just looked up and I saw 111, like the time of the camera was at 111. So this is maybe a really, really important number for you guys, but what I was saying was, I think the offer or opportunity coming to you guys is one that you are already aware of, one that you are already desiring, and maybe you've even been trying to manifest it or taking actions towards it. So this is like already a wish of yours. The 11th house in astrology it is associated with our hopes and dreams. I can't remember if that association is in Western or Eastern astrology, but it is an association of the 11th house. And the Aquarius energy is also making me think of the star in tarot, which is about our hopes and dreams coming true and a promising future. So things are looking really, really good so far. For your planet, we have Mercury. So there's some kind of communication that is coming in for you guys. Maybe you are trying to manifest hearing back from somebody, trying to manifest a certain communication or a certain conversation, um, or you're going to be hearing from the person or organization really soon in the form of a text message, a phone call, an email. I feel like someone's going to be reaching out to you soon and basically letting you know that your wish has come true. So it's really looking like your dream offer, which this is the first group where that message is coming through really, really strongly. Like this is something you've already been waiting for, hoping for, longing for. Wow, okay. I'm also going to take a clarifying tarot card and see if there's anything else you should know about this offer. Okay, oh my gosh, we have the Ace of Cups. So for many of you, I do think that this offer is going to be emotional in nature. Um, I don't know if you guys could see, because sometimes when I'm shuffling, it's not in the frame but it it felt like it was taking a while for this card to come out but the cards were always really nicely in alignment like the deck was very neat and easy to shuffle and so i do pay attention to how the deck is behaving when i'm reading energy like not just the card that comes out but what the deck is doing and this tells me this is likely something you've been and i just noticed we have another one <laughs> This is something that you guys have been waiting for for quite some time, but you've always been on the right path. Like everything has always unfolded how it was meant to, and it was just a matter of time. So yes, with the Ace of Cups here, it is very likely something that is emotional in nature. Um, somebody might be coming forward and expressing their feelings to you. Um, it could be a new relationship or a new friendship that is coming up here. Um, and actually, Aquarius and the 11th house are associated with friendship, so this definitely doesn't have to be um, romantic in nature. 
but again I do think it's something that you guys have been really wanting and really craving so if you have been more trying to manifest a romantic relationship a certain message from somebody a certain confession of feelings I definitely think that that's what this ace of cups is talking about and this represents a new beginning in your life where you're feeling very emotionally fulfilled you're feeling at peace and you're also feeling very um very at home so whether this is a love offering or a friendship offering i think that you're going to feel really at home with this person very secure very cared for and there's also this feeling of your outside world finally aligning with what you've been feeling intuitively the world around you finally aligning with what has been in your heart your heart's desires your heart's inklings and your heart's needs being met so it's a very happy and peaceful time that is coming to you guys and it's interesting that you chose this deck because i feel such a cheerful energy when i look at this card like the flowers are so vibrant and coming to life and it's definitely a very sweet energy that this deck has so with that being said, let's take a look at this deck now that you guys chose and see what wants to come out. Also, I should mention if there's someone you have in mind and they are an Aquarius or also a Gemini or a Virgo, that could be some confirmation as well, but it definitely doesn't have to be. That's just an extra layer of confirmation for those who may need it. Um, and the Ace of Cups is also associated with all water signs, I believe. So Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Those could also be your signs. Okay, so we have Re Ranunculus. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce the flower and the message on it is dazzling charm. And we have chamomile with calm. Um, so another opportunity that I'm seeing for you guys, you might have an opportunity for a vacation or to take some time off, um, to spoil or pamper yourself in some way. Um, like spa is coming to my mind, spa or massage or whatever is most relaxing to you. I think you're going to have an opportunity to take some time off and rest and relax. And actually that matches well with the Ace of Cups because this is about self-love, self-care, filling your own cup, rejuvenating, replenishing, restoring your peace. I think some of you guys are going to have the opportunity to go on a holiday soon. In addition, you see there's multiple offers coming through here. Um, some of you guys might also be offered like a physical gift. I'm also feeling that maybe someone is actually going to give you flowers or like jewelry or some kind of sentimental present I feel is also coming to you guys. So first of all, let's look at the colors of these flowers because the colors are very important in this deck. The yellow and orange of this flower is making me think, is making me think of the sun card in tarot. So Leo energy could be significant as well. This one's giving me six of cups energy too, which is, is kind of cool, but oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say when, and this always happens to me when I, when I want to say something and then I don't say it, it comes up again. I was going to say with the Ace of Cups that the season of summer might be significant for when this offer is coming in. Um, this is, of course, a timeless reading, but if when you're watching this video, summer season for where you are in the world is coming up soon, that might be a significant season for you. And then I was just going to say, this reminds me of Leo energy, and this reminds me of Six of Cups, which for me just feels cancery, even though I'm not sure if that's the the actual association, but for me, Six of Cups is Cancer. And then I thought, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then that actually matches up with the summer season, like Cancer and Leo season. So yes, those might be important time frames for you guys. But as I was saying, <laughs> this yellowy orangey color of the flowers is just so bright, cheerful, 
happy. It makes me think of a very carefree energy, also very inspired and uplifted. And this dazzling charm, it makes me think of you guys seeing the world in a more vivid light. Like because you have so much inner happiness and inner peace, it's almost as if the outer world around you has this glow now. The colors look more bright and vivid. Your senses are heightened. You feel like you're on cloud nine. You feel like your life is a fairy tale. This is the emotion that is waiting for you. And then calm, I think, is mirroring really nicely with this feeling of inner peace. The white color makes me think of purity, innocence. And that's why it makes me think of the six of cups because it also has those, um, those white flowers on it. And there's a little bit of white in here as well. But again, it's that feeling of being at home. You know when you get home and you can like take off your <laughs> take off your shoes, take off your bra and just just relax. Just let it all let it all loose is maybe the right expression. Let loose and relax and be natural. This is the kind of security and familiarity and deep serenity that I think is waiting for you guys. It feels like a huge weight is being lifted as if, you know, this happy ending, this peace that you have been waiting for is here for you. So we have a really, really beautiful energy to start off this reading. We are going to move into the next tarot deck and see what will happen if you choose to accept this offer or opportunity and what will happen if you decline it. So I'm going to look at Obviously, I think that you guys will accept a gift if you receive it. <laughs> I don't know if, if anyone's like, no, I don't want your gift. So maybe I won't pull cards for that, but I'm going to pull cards for this emotional offer that is coming to you. And I'm also going to pull cards for that opportunity to take a holiday or to spoil or pamper yourself. So we'll take a look at those two things. Okay, so for the emotional offer or the relationship offer, that is coming to you guys. What will happen if you accept this offer? And we have the devil. What will happen if you decline this offer? We have temperance. So Okay, these are both major arcana. We have Capricorn energy here and we have Sagittarius energy here. So I do feel like I need to give you guys a little bit of a heads up. And I do think this is representing a situation that is kind of unfavorable. However, I think that if you are aware of this energy, and if you work on it, this is something that you can change so that when this offer does come around, everything will go smoothly. The devil represents negative thoughts, fears, limiting beliefs, unhealthy attachments, things in that area. And I feel that there may need, may be some healing that needs to be done on your end to truly find and maintain this inner peace. And it makes sense. When I was talking about these cards earlier and I was saying like, your inner peace is finally here, your happy ending is finally here. There was like a little bit of a red light going off in my head. Like we need to make sure that this is being supplied from within because that's the only way to really have lasting happiness and peace. So we've spoken about you guys really wishing for this offer, really longing for this offer, trying to manifest this. And I think that this is a little bit of a heads up just to make sure that there is no unhealthy attachment here. The devil in some extreme cases, it can talk about like even obsession, like really, really strong longing and feelings that are kind of bordering on obsession and limiting beliefs that need to be addressed. And I can give, 
I can just give an example that's coming to my mind. This is hypothetical, but only to, only to illustrate my point. Let's say there is somebody who is single and they also kind of have low self-esteem. This would be their devil. So their devil would be low self-esteem. And maybe they really, really are longing for a partner, which there is nothing wrong with that. But maybe consciously or subconsciously, they're kind of thinking that having a partner in my life is going to be the cure to my low self-esteem because it's going to make me feel um, beautiful. It's going to make me feel loved. It's going to make me feel chosen. So if I can just get this partner, then my self-esteem will improve. Almost like the partner is a band-aid. And I'm sure that this person, once they do get a partner, they are going to be over the moon and they're going to be on cloud nine for some time. But it would only be a matter of time before the devil like rears its ugly head again and is messing with that person. And so it's it's not that there's anything wrong with the connection. It's not that there's anything wrong with the person that they're interested in. It's just that they still need to tackle this devil. The devil is still an issue. And the devil could also be the very attachment for the person like we spoke about, like someone who has a, a unhealthy or even kind of obsessive attachment to somebody. Then it's like their every little move matters. Their every little move needs to be analyzed. Their every little move could make or break our feeling of happiness and worth in the connection. So this offer is definitely coming to you and there's a huge promise of happiness and I'm actually kind of hoping that there's still a little bit of time before this offer comes because I think the devil is calling you guys to face your insecurities and see if you haven't been consciously or unconsciously like waiting for this partnership to come in and make things better so to speak waiting for this offer to come in and solve your problems and make your insecurities go away. And it's just something that you need to know, I think to avoid unrealistic expectations or to avoid disappointment. And it's very interesting that temperance is next to this because this is all about balancing your emotions so that you're like this and you're not going like this. And if you have a lot of attachment to somebody when or something, when things are going well, the highs are going to feel like this. And when things are not going so well, the lows are going to feel like this. Whereas if you have a stable sense of self and a realistic expectation, it's going to be more calm and peaceful ups and downs. There's still ups and downs, but you're maintaining your sense of inner peace. So I also want to say that this is not about having to get rid of your insecurities before this offer comes to you. Healing is a perpetual journey. We're always going to have things to heal. And the beautiful thing about partnerships is that you can meet each other where you are and acknowledge and embrace your imperfections and work on them together. And that is the realistic way to go about it. So just having this knowledge that Yes, this offer is coming, it's beautiful, but it's not going to solve all my problems. I'm going to have the same problems that I did before. I'm going to have the same demons or devil or insecurities that I did before, but we can work on them together. I think the devil is almost here to just warn in case you had any of those, in case you had any of those expectations. Now, a, a different and kind of positive interpretation of the devil is that um, if this is a romantic connection and you resonate with this energy, there might be a very, very powerful physical union, <laughs> physical connection that happens between the two of you when this offer comes to you, as you can see the, you know, the steamy image here. So <laughs> you could be enjoying a very passionate honeymoon phase where it's like you can't keep your mind off each other you can't keep your hands off each other that is definitely another interpretation of the devil that i want to mention and that you are free to claim um of course it's really really up to you the timing of taking this offer temperance again it's about holding back and balancing your emotions and 
I think that you guys will feel when the time is right. You guys will feel it's interesting. I think <laughs> it's almost like to know if you're ready for this offer is that you don't like soar all the way to heaven when this offer comes because you realize like this is not a be all end all invitation to heaven. This is not like my saving grace or something like that. When you can be balanced about it and like and be happy but also know like okay we have some work to do and we have some work to do together. I feel like when you have that kind of level-headedness this is when you'll know that you're ready. Okay so let's take a look at your rest, your holiday, you're treating yourself. Okay, so some of you guys are worried about taking this time off because you feel like things are going to fall apart if you take a break. That came out really, really quickly and that's a very, very interesting. <laughs> okay, you guys got four major arcana out of four cards, which is insane. Um, we also have, did I mention, I feel like every zodiac sign is coming up now. We had Capricorn, Sag, this is Mars, so Aries, Scorpio, and Gemini. <laughs> have I? I feel like I've probably named every sign at this point. Um, but yeah, very interesting that all four cards showing up are major arcana. The connection that we're dealing with here is likely a faded one, someone who is or is going to be very, very significant in your life and help your soul learn a lot of lessons. This is probably someone who no matter how you may try, no matter how you may try, it's like you can't get rid of their energy because your souls keep calling each other in. This is probably a connection that has gone on for a very long time beyond this lifetime with temperance here, just in case that's relevant to you. If not, ignore me. Um, I really like the transition that we have here though from the devil to the lovers because I feel like this is the happy side <laughs> of love and this is the like negative or dark side of love and they're both number six cards like this is number six and this is 15 that reduces to six so I like that we're coming out of this kind of spooky energy <laughs> and moving into this light energy throughout the course of this reading but yeah with this tower here this is like ah I don't know what to do everything's falling apart and I think that some of you guys are worried about taking time off, like stepping away from your work or stepping away from your responsibilities, um, taking a break from your commitments of helping and serving other people and just taking time to really serve and take care of yourself, you're worried that things are going to fall apart. Like you're worried, maybe you're worried that people are going to be disappointed in you or like you're worried that you're going to lose progress or something like that or Maybe you just have general anxiety around resting, feel like you shouldn't do that, feel like it's going to be the end of the world. That's what I see with the tower really, but I want to tell you that everything is going to be just fine. Your job will be waiting for you, your responsibilities will be waiting for you, the people in your life will be waiting for you. They will understand if you need to take some time for yourself and if they don't, that is their problem and that is frankly not cool. Um, you should not be made to feel bad when you need to take time for yourself. And this tower, I feel like if you guys don't take time for yourself, and I don't want to scare you, but like there's fire here, things are falling apart, like it could lead to burnout and it could even lead to physical illness. I used to get sick all the time when I was in high school because I was in like so many extracurricular activities and always getting up really early and staying late after school and I would always get a cold when I was like tired and working too hard so and the lovers is also about good health so take care of your body take care of yourself <laughs> temperance is about that too shit like these all go together really really well or you risk you risk having a burnout and just know that everything is going to be okay I think it's really important for you guys to take a break, but also really turn your mind off and also like maybe turn your devices off and not be checking your email or thinking about, oh, all of this stuff is piling up because I'm taking time off. Like this is important. You guys need a rest. That's coming through really, really strongly. 
We also have the lovers here, which is which is quite interesting. I feel like I've kind of abandoned the like <laughs> what will happen if you if you take the offer versus refuse the offer. It was working for the other piles, but for this group, all of the energy is like just coming together in one cohesive kind of reading. So I think I've kind of abandoned that, but <laughs> um, the lovers is about health in your relationships and can also talk about partners or soulmates coming together. Like I mentioned, it's a really nice, um, happy resolution to the devil card that we saw. Um, it's like you guys need a mental health break. I feel like that's really important with the devil here, you guys. It's like you're carrying, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself and you're carrying a lot of anxieties. And I feel like a lot of it is just you guys being under a lot of stress and being under a lot of pressure and just being freaking tired. It's almost like you guys haven't been yourselves lately because you're pushing yourself so much. And I feel like when you guys are tired or when you're under a lot of stress, it's like you become more panicked, you become more insecure, your critical eye becomes even sharper. You start to think about how everything could go wrong. Maybe you guys are really like tired and exhausted and you're thinking like, I just want this partner to come in and save me and make my life easy again. There might subconsciously be that kind of feeling of like, someone save me from this because I'm not going to take myself out of this. And I think you guys need to learn to be your own hero and save yourself from your stressful situations and put yourself first. This is how you restore the healthy relationship with yourself and the healthy relationship with your own boundaries. And I almost feel like this is a key ingredient for you guys to be able to step into this partnership, into this next beautiful chapter of your life with healthy expectations and without putting a strain on it because you're taking really, really good care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. It all ties together. So your first item on your agenda is take a break, please. Take a break, be easy on yourself. Rest, rejuvenate, care for yourself, learn to respect your boundaries. That's the most important thing if I could take away one thing from this reading. All right, so we're going to move on now to one last oracle deck to get final messages and advice for you. Okay, so this card says, okay, this is probably about your connection because this talks about facing each other with pure intentions. Mm -hmm. So it's important to get this, to get this devil sorted out. And again, it's not about completely, uh, what is it called? Completely eradicating your insecurities and your fears, but it's about being aware of them going into the connection with that awareness and being willing to work through things together, work through the good, the bad, and the ugly hand in hand and without thinking like, oh, my life is bad and I, I need this connection here to make it good or I'm unhappy, but once you come into my life, I'll be happy because this is not a fair expectation and I think both people need to be like taking responsibility for themselves. We also have, uh, this card says to cherish, cherish those around you. So yeah, I think for a lot of you, this is a beautiful, beautiful connection coming to you. Like with the lovers here, there's a lot of peace and harmony that can exist between the two of you. Obviously you are longing for this person for a reason because you see so many beautiful qualities in them. And I'm really, really confident that you can have a wonderful, harmonious relationship here. But again, it all starts with taking care of yourself. And I'm also really confident that you guys will be able to do that. You just need to know that things aren't going to fall apart if you step back and take care, for your, take care of yourself. And there's no need to feel guilty and there's no need to feel anxious about it. Like, rest is so important for the human body, for the human psyche, and 
it is messed up how we expect ourselves to just keep going and going and producing more because it's unrealistic it's unhealthy it's only gonna end in burnout take good care of yourselves that is the biggest biggest message here in order to have a happy and peaceful life you need to have a happy and peaceful mind because if you don't have that whatever is going on even if the most beautiful stuff ever is going on in the outside world you will not be able to perceive it you'll not be able to fully take it in your inner world is the biggest reflection of how you will perceive your outer world so getting your inner world in order or just committing to caring and nurturing your inner world is like the biggest and most important step for you guys and is really really going to improve your intimate connections with the people you love with this person we have been speaking about but in your connections in general okay so these are all the messages that i'm seeing for you guys so i'm going to end the reading here thank you very very much for letting me do this reading for you i hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and i wish you all the best please take good care of yourselves stay healthy don't forget to like comment and sus subscribe if you feel like doing that i also have a patreon so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic that will be linked down below too and i also have a music channel the song that you guys heard at the very beginning of this video is an original song so if you guys are interested in hearing that or the other songs that i have that is linked down below as well i'm sending you guys lots of love and i will see you in the next one bye bye hi number fours so if you guys chose the aora gemstone oracle this is going to be your reading all about the offers and opportunities that are coming your way so just before we get into it i do want to say that i will likely be giving multiple different interpretations of offers that are coming to you and please feel free to claim all of them or however many you want so it's not that you're getting either a or b but you are free to claim both a and b there are no limits to the good things that are coming to your life. So we're going to start off this reading with the Astro Dice to get our first idea of what might be making its way to you. Ooh, okay. So first we have the number seven. This would be related to the seventh house in astrology. So there is something about partnerships that is coming up here still pretty vague because there are so many different types of partnerships um, and we'll get into that more with the cards but it could be a romantic offer it could be an offer of friendship it could be a business partnership we also have the sign of Taurus here so the person who is bringing this offer to you could be a Taurus or this could be showing us that the partnership is one that will be very stable and sturdy because that's what the Taurus energy reminds me of. It will also likely be one that is very fruitful for you. It's almost giving me, oh yeah, <laughs> it's giving me Empress vibes because we have Taurus here and then the seventh house is Libra energy very Venusian, very Empress-like energy. The partnership that's being offered to you here is very fertile, meaning that it has potential to last for a long time, to make you happy for a long time. You will reap a lot of rewards and abundance from this partnership, whether that be love, whether that be money, whether that be knowledge and experiences, or a combination of all of those things. This is like a partnership that keeps on giving. And then we also have the sun here, which is bringing this beautiful, cheerful energy to the equation. There was another group that got the sun. I don't remember which one it was, but it's kind of giving me a similar vibe as that group in the sense that the offer that is coming to you here is really going to allow you to shine and really allow you to be your true authentic self. So whatever the nature is of this partnership, I feel like there is sort of a no filter dynamic that exists between the two of you where you can just be real, you can just be raw, you can express your desires, you can express your visions and your dreams. It's like you don't have to have a persona or you don't have to wear a mask. I'm seeing the sun as like your essence shining through. So this is a really, really nice energy that we are starting off with. I'm also just going to pull um, a clarifying tarot card for this energy as well and see if there's any other details that you guys should know. 
also, <laughs> um, with this Taurus energy here, this is really silly, but someone might be offering you food, <laughs> um, like inviting you out to eat or bringing you your favorite snack or something like that. Okay, so let's get a clarifying tarot card and see if there's anything else we should know about this energy. Oh, we have the Page of Cups and I also want to... We have the Nine of Wands at the bottom of the deck, which I do kind of feel called to put here as well. Um, so this is Water Sign Energy, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, just in case that is significant for you guys. Um, so this could be the person who is bringing you an offer. And what I see here is that this is somebody who cares about you a lot, um, but who has been a little bit shy to approach you. I think that this is someone who is a lot more sensitive and a lot more of a softy than they let on. And probably, you probably know that this person cares about you, but maybe you haven't seen just how deep it goes. But what I'm feeling with the Nine of Wands is that this is someone who kind of likes to appear... Well, let me get this straight. They are very strong and they are very capable. But this is someone who likes to appear like they have it all together on their own. The Nine of Wands kind of has this feeling of having your guard up or putting on a brave face. Almost like being more strong than you need to be. And this is someone who's been wanting to open up and be vulnerable with you, but they feel shy to do that. Or this could also be somebody who's like really, really um, accomplished in their professional life and a lot of people look up to them. But then when it comes to emotional matters, they feel so inexperienced. And there's kind of this gap where they seem like this alpha, this top dog, but then they're, they also have this aspect of them that is baby <laughs> and that they're shy to kind of let out. Um, and again, I think that this can apply for any sort of partnership that this is. Um, but for example, even if it's a business partnership, this might be someone who really liked to portray like, I know what I'm doing. I have it all figured out on my own. I can do this by myself. But the truth is that they've really been wanting to pick your brain or they've really been wanting to you know, explore in your creativity and they've really been wanting to partner up with you on something. Um, and then, of course, in the romantic or the friendship sense, this is someone who's just been afraid of being vulnerable with you and letting you know how much they truly care and how much of an impact you truly make on them. Maybe you guys have kind of had an inkling that they felt this way just from reading their energy. But when it comes to their actions towards you, I can really see that this person has been um, reluctant and holding back. So there's kind of this feeling that you, you've you kind of had them on your radar. You've been picking up on their energy and maybe you guys have been feeling, yeah, pretty soon, <laughs> pretty soon this person is going to be making me an offer. I feel like a lot of you guys have already... Um, already sensed this and this reading is probably just a confirmation or oh thank goodness I was picking up on that accurately because I, I felt like they wanted to say something but then they were kind of holding back maybe you've been picking up a kind of weird or mixed energy from this person but yes I totally totally want to um, confirm their intentions to you and confirm their future actions to you and then that gives the sun a whole other really nice meaning. Um, we were talking about the sun being authenticity, things being exposed, taking the mask off. So hopefully this guard that's been up with the Nine of Wands, or not hopefully, it will be coming down and you guys can truly shine and express yourselves in the way that you want to. Um, I guess for now, Spirit is kind of leaving it open in terms of what type of partnership this is. Like, I really don't know if this is romantic, platonic, um, work-related. Also, some of you guys, this could be an offer for reconciliation. Like, someone you've had a falling out with, a friend, a family member, an ex. Um, they could be offering you, like, a peace offering or you know, coming to apologize, coming to reconcile with you. With the Taurus and Sun energy here, maybe this is someone who let their ego get in the way and they were quite stubborn when it came to 
admitting their mistake. Um, which it's so important if you want to make peace for both sides to be willing to admit where they went wrong and maybe this person is finally learning to be the bigger person and come forward and, and admit that and they're realizing that the connection with you and how they care for you is more important than their ego and it's more important than being right For those of you, oh, this could be so many different things. There's also some of you who got rejected by this person before and now they're coming back around. So it could be like um, you got rejected by a company and now they're like, hey, we're just to let you know, we're still looking. <laughs> or like you confess your feelings to someone and they rejected you and now they're coming back around. Because there's a feeling of them having to swallow their pride and being humbled when they come to you. All right, so we're going to take a couple cards from the Oracle deck that you guys chose. Okay, so we have Pearl here. Um, the month of June might be significant, so this offer could be coming in June. Um, or this person could be born in June, which actually that matches with water signs because they could be like a cancer born in June. And we also have rhodochrosite. So this is a card that is, or a stone I should say, that is associated with unconditional love, divine love. There's definitely a lot of love or at least a lot of compassion here. And with all of the butterflies on this card, I feel like a huge transformation is about to take place in this connection or there's a potential for a huge transformation to take place if you take them up on their offer which of course you don't have to and we're gonna look into more like what's gonna happen there but yes there is definitely a lot of love here and with Pearl as well I think this is something that has been a long time coming I think this offer is gonna bring you a lot of clarity and I'm just thinking of whenever I see pearl in a card, I think of the time that it takes for a pearl to be refined and to really reach perfection. And I think I started using this interpretation with the weaver tarot. Yes, the weaver tarot. And the queen of cups is like an oyster with a pearl. And this card really got me thinking that you know, the oyster is shut, but all the while it's refining this pearl inside. And I just saw 1111, so that might be significant for you guys. All the while the oyster is refining this pearl. So I feel like this is something that this person has been thinking about for a long, long time, like reaching out to you. They've been thinking about it for a long time, but they wanted it to be perfect because it's like, in some ways, it's either this person thinks really, really highly of you or they know that they've messed up and they have to make that right, or it could be both. But it's like they didn't want to make this offer to you until they knew it was perfect, like a perfect reflection of how they feel, a perfect reflection of what they can offer you. Um, and I do think the contents of this offer will satisfy you. Like whatever you're looking for from this person, I do think they will deliver it to you, but they're going to feel very humble and they're going to feel like what I'm giving you is not enough. Even if it is enough, they're kind of coming forward with that humble or shy feeling. This is what it looks like. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next tarot deck. So we want to see what is going to happen if you accept this offer and what is going to happen if you decline this offer. And it's interesting because this pile, unlike the rest of them, it really seems to be talking about one specific thing, one specific offer that is coming to you guys. So I'm going to pull a bit of extra cards for you guys. Like I'm going to pull two cards to see what will happen if you accept this offer? Okay, we have temperance. Eight of 
and we have the nine of cups. Ooh. And then what would happen if you decline this offer? We have the two of swords and we have the high priestess. Okay. So we have a little bit more water sign energy coming through here. Water energy seems to be the most, um, the most prevalent here as well as Venusian energy which we have over here. We also have a bit of Sag with Temperance. Maybe there's like a, a Sag with a Scorpio Venus or a Scorpio with a Sag Venus or what else? Sag with a Libra Venus or <laughs> something like that. Again, the, the zodiac signs that I'm listing here are just an extra level of confirmation for those who may need it. It totally doesn't have to be your sign. Um, also, the letters P and R could be significant. So that could be somebody's first or last name or the initial of a country, city, or company. Um, so I'm going to start with Temperance and the Nine of Cups. This is indicating what will happen if you accept this offer. Like, if you... Yeah, if you choose to partner up with this person. With the Nine of Cups here, I definitely think that this will bring a positive outcome. And I think that you can find a lot of happiness and a lot of satisfaction within this connection. And also, many of you have probably been wishing for this. Like you've been hoping um, that this Page of Cups would come around and bring an offer to you. So in many ways, it's kind of like your wish is coming true. I think that you've seen... You're going to see the growth that you wanted to see. You're going to see the change that you wanted to see. And the offer that is being presented to you is something that you are very, very satisfied with. Um, with temperance here, I do feel like there is some advice to reflect on the offer before accepting. This is a card that talks about moderation, restraint, balancing out your emotions. And so... I wonder if when this page of cups comes forward, there is like an initial burst of emotion and a kind of an impulsive feeling bubbling up. Um, and I don't know if that's a positive emotion or a negative emotion, but I feel like some burst of intense emotion when this offer first comes to you. And while I do think it could be very beneficial to accept and to initiate or reinitiate this partnership, Temperance is almost saying like, take in everything, take in the offer, take in what is said, and then just think about it for a while and allow your emotions to balance out. And this might be something that you, um, that you talk about like twice, like you have a conversation about the offer, then you have some time apart, and then you come back again. Now, I can see this going one of two ways, and, and it kind of ties into the cards that are here. For some of you, um, let's say this is like, I don't know, an ex is coming back and you really, really wanted them to come back. You might be overflowed with a positive emotion and you might feel an impulse to say like, yes, yes, I accept. Let's go into this partnership. And then Temperance is asking you to take in what they say, take some time to think about it, calm yourself, reflect on it, come back and say, I want things to work out with you, but I just need some time to build our trust again. So maybe we can take things slow or maybe we can initiate a friendship something like that. And I can also see it going the other way. Like, let's say you guys were um, rejected by a company and you were really salty about it. <laughs> Maybe when they come back and give you an offer again, you're actually overcome with a negative emotion because you're like, screw these people. Oh, look who, look who comes crawling back now. Like, you might have that kind of um, angry or prideful feeling. And then Temperance is also asking you <laughs> to, like, don't respond with a snarky email just yet. Take some time to cool off. Let's not take this personally. Let's swallow our pride and hear them out because they might have a really good offer for you. So, again, I'm not sure. And I feel like this reading has such varied situations and such varied emotions towards this Page of Cups. Um... So I'll do my best to describe like the different ways it could play out. Um, but whether that initial emotion is positive or negative, I do think it needs to mellow out before you, before you agree to this partnership. Because acting too impulsively 
you know, it, it could cause you to pass up on a really good opportunity or it could cause you to dive too quickly into something. So just be like this guy <laughs> and just balance yourself out. But ultimately with this nine of cups here, I do think that you guys are going to be really, really happy. And I think that your intuition is really still pulling you towards this partnership and towards this connection. Um, because I think that if you were to turn down this offer, there would always be this kind of deep, intuitive, nagging feeling that, and we have repeating number twos here as well, like totally up to you guys, but I really feel from a spiritual level that you and this page of cups energy is really gravitating towards each other. And if you cut yourself off physically or mentally, I do think you're going to feel this pull from your soul. Cause this is like the high priestess is like that unspoken intuition. It's like you feel deep down that there is unfinished business, that there is something you need to work out with them or something you need to hear from them or talk through with them. And the two of swords is this feeling of being stuck, of kind of being on the fence. So it's like, even if you're walking away, you're not really walking away. This is the kind of feeling that I get with these cards. Um, so it might be kind of hard to move on. I think at the very least, you need to finish some kind of business with this page of cups here. Um, and I do also feel with these two cards, a bit of a reiteration of that pride message. It could be this person's pride, like they had to swallow their pride to come forward to you. But it could also be a bit of you guys having to swallow your pride to accept this offer. Because like there is that part of you that might be a little bit I feel like salty is too light of a word. Yeah, like a little bit hurt or a little bit resentful. That might not be for everybody and it's probably depending on your situation. Um, but there's definitely a very strong and deep but kind of silent intuitive pull that I think may not go away until you finish business here until everything is out in the open, until everything is exposed. You at the very least need clarity. Whether you go into the partnership, that's entirely up to you. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I think that if you don't get your clarity and if you don't talk things through, it is something that could bug you for a, a very long time. All right, so we are going to finish off the reading with one last oracle deck and i think i will pull some an extra card for you guys in this part as well okay so we have try out many different ways and <laughs> i feel like there's a couple different ways i can interpret this the first thing that came to my mind was the universe has been trying to bring these two parties together for quite some time and anytime there's been like a blockage or a setback the universe is trying so many different ways to bring you together trying to get your attention with signs and synchronicities trying to feed you messages through dreams like the universe has been trying to nudge you guys to to come together and work things out we had this beautiful um, fertile energy, empress-like energy at the beginning of the reading. And I feel like regardless of the type of connection that this is, the two of you could create something really, really beautiful together that might benefit the collective or that might benefit your community. Almost like there is a greater purpose for your coming together. So I do think that the universe has been trying many different ways to facilitate this and to nudge the two of you along a little bit. Like, I'm not going to lie, that was the really first um, and really clear interpretation that jumped out at me when I looked at this card. But I also think there's a message here that this page of cups has been thinking of many different ways that they could reach out to you. Like, you know, when you really want to talk to someone you think like, oh, well, um, oh, their birthday is on this day, so maybe I can slip in with a happy birthday message, or, 
oh, I, I saw this thing that, that might be relevant to them so I can bring that up. It's like, you want to find your angle of entry or like, maybe I should just leave a comment like maybe I should just put out a feeler or maybe I should post something indirect about them or maybe I should ask this person about them. It's like they've been trying different ways to get to you or or contemplating about the different ways that they could reach out to you. But definitely this person has been checking on you and kind of missing your energy quite a bit. Okay. We also have, oh, interesting. This card talks about, it's like spitting out the poison from your heart, like spitting out the negativity, spitting out the toxicity. I feel like there's stuff that, there's stuff that you guys need to get off of your chest. And I also feel like there is some kind of release and some kind of transformation that is happening here for the better. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Those, I'm going to take all four of them. Oh, these actually go together really, really well. These are really similar message. So here we have this card that is talking about spitting out the poison from your heart. And then this card says like, find the cause of, is disharmony a word? Unharmony? Whatever. Find the cause of disharmony in your body and in your mind or find the cause of disorder in your body and in your heart. This is total healing energy, total purging energy, but this connection is metamorphosizing and it's moving in a beautiful direction with this nine of cups here. And then we have stand firmly in the ground like a tree. So yeah, this is not going anywhere. This partnership is not going anywhere. This energy is not going anywhere. And I also think that this is like your guide saying to stand up for this partnership. This partnership still has so much fertility in it and there's still so much beauty to be experienced here. And I think it's really important for both parties to not let um, pride or stubbornness get in the way because things can be worked out, things can be exposed and things can be moved to a beautiful, harmonious place. This is like, don't go anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still, let's try many different ways to make this work and let's get out all of our negativity and start fresh. This is, oh, this is a really nice message when you put them all together. There's this feeling of renewed hope. There's this feeling of refinement and perfection with the pearl of deep transformation with the butterflies and ultimately wishes and desires being fulfilled with the nine of cups. So I hope that you would feel a sense of renewed hope from this reading. I hope you would feel that things can turn out well for this partnership. Um, but yes, these are all of the messages that I am seeing for you guys. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon. So if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I also have a music channel. The song that you heard at the very start of this video is an original song. Um, so if you wanted to listen to that or any of my other songs, there is a link down below for that as well. I'm sending you guys lots of love and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.